Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Professor David Tizard. Welcome to lecture number three in this advanced writing course. Very impressed with your writing last week. Very impressed how you were able to take some contemporary, timely and important issues and write about them in such an honest and gripping way. And it's good that you have the opportunity to do that because you're going to realize that writing and thinking are really connected to each other. Because if you're going to write about some things like COVID-19, like the nth room, like online learning, you have feelings about it. But when you write, you have to think and you have to try to get these down sometimes. So yes, uh, last week I was very pleased to see you doing that and see you arrange your thoughts. I thought it was some really, really good work. This week, as you've probably seen, I want to change track a little bit. And I always like changing tracks because that's fun. If you do the same thing all the time, yes, it can have certain advantages, but changing up is good. It's good to change around. So to this week, two differences. The first thing is we're going to do poetry, which still involves writing and English, still the same thing. And the second thing is uh, it will be submitted in a discussion format where you're going to be able to see each other's work. So you don't have to worry about reading big essays from each other because that's difficult and maybe not interesting. But this way you might be able to just see some words, some titles, some images. So their differences, I'll explain a bit more of that at the end. For now, let's start with this image on the screen that you can hopefully see in front of you. The difference between poetry and other texts. So in week one, it was Orwell. In week two, it was analysis of Chen and Exo and marriage. Other texts, the writer has to go through the intellect. Things have to be thought about. They have to go through the brain. They're considered. You're making arguments. You're trying to be persuasive. You're trying to be clever, essentially. You're trying to say, hey, look at these great arguments I've got. This is why we need to change society. This is what you're wrong about. This is why I'm great. A lot of the writing can be like that, especially academic writing, especially reports. You have to convince persuade people of things. Poetry is very different. You're not trying to persuade people through rhetoric or through arguments. You're simply trying to connect with people. Good poetry speaks directly here. You don't have to worry so much about what's going up here. You don't have to worry so much about deeply analyzing every word and making sure you get the statistics and the numbers and all of, the, all of these things. Poetry can just be like a photo, like a pop song. Poetry can just be like looking at your dog when it's sleeping. Poetry can be very simple. It's just a feeling. It's just an, a sense, an image, something that often goes beyond words. But it's created with words. You can create feelings in other people with words. This is one of our aims. Uh, let me see where I am. Thank you. Our aim or mokpyo. Hmm? create feelings in other people through words. That's one of the aims. Obviously, you've got to be creating feelings in yourself, but this is one of the things here. What kind of feelings? What kind of feelings? Now, they don't have to be 
sophisticated. They don't have to be deep or philosophical, tolak jogoro. Don't worry about that. Any feeling is a feeling. So it could be actually sophisticated. It could be deep. It could be light. It could be the feeling of happiness. It could be the feeling of sadness. It could be the feeling of revenge. It could be the feeling of tap tape. Ah, tap tape. If you can write something and then the reader goes, ah, tap tape. That works because your words made a feeling in that person. So if the feeling that comes up is the, the person feels tap tape, then it works. If you write something and no feeling comes up in that person, it doesn't work. Your writing doesn't speak. It doesn't resonate. It doesn't have a, a reverb to it. So one of the goals in this is for your writing to connect with the reader and to create a feeling in them. Now, you don't know what feeling it might create. You might try to write something that creates a feeling of happiness. But when the reader reads it, they get the feeling of surprise or anger or love. That might happen. It's totally natural. But as long as there's something there, that's the goal. That's what we're looking for. It's really hard. <laughs> it's really, really hard. And if it was easy, everybody would write Harry Potter, Fifty Shades of Grey, The Old Man and the Sea, Hamlet, whatever it is. But ev not anybody, not everybody can write those things. It's really hard. But I want us to try this week. So just remember that this is going to be really hard. You might not succeed but try. And in the class, there might be one or two students that, that have that skill, that ability. This is not a poetry class. It's just something we're doing this week. So let's try. There are three poems that I would like us to look at. Let's see where I found my poetry picture from. Let's start with Bukowski. Charles Bukowski. Uh, American beat writer, almost. Very clear, direct. Let's read it first, and then hopefully you can understand a bit of his style. Because probably you have these preconceptions, these ideas, these prejudice or bias about what poetry is. Poetry does not need to be that thing. So just before we start here... The best poetry, this is just an idea, it's not a rule, is honest. The best poetry is honest. If you're fit, because when we have thoughts and feelings, our thoughts and feelings aren't always deep. Friday night, you're watching TV, you have just these normal thoughts and feelings like everybody else. They're not always deep. They're not about the universe and God and daffodils and sunshine and angels. That's not what people generally think about all the time. Some people do. People have normal thoughts. And if you can get those thoughts and put them down and arrange them in such a way, that's sometimes the best poetry because then everyone can understand it. It speaks to it speaks to millions and billions of people because it's honest. Honesty is a very important thing to look for because it requires you to be honest with yourself. So writing can be a very introspective thing. You have to see what's going to come out your hand and you might not like it. You might be scared of it. And that's exciting. That's interesting. Some people like to do it. Some people don't like to do it. If you want to try, that's what you have to do. You have to see what's inside honestly wanting to come out. It's part of writing. Let's read Bukowski's. So, you want to be a writer. 
If it doesn't come bursting out of you, in spite of everything, don't do it. Unless it comes unasked out of your heart and your mind and your mouth and your gut, don't do it. If you have to sit for hours staring at your computer screen or hunched over your typewriter searching for words, don't do it. If you're doing it for money or fame, don't do it. If you're doing it because you want women in your bed, don't do it. If you have to sit there and rewrite it again and again, don't do it. If it's hard work just thinking about doing it, don't do it. If you're trying to write like somebody else, forget about it. If you have to wait for it to roar out of you, then wait patiently. If it ne never does roar out of you, do something else. If you first have to read it to your wife or your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your parents or to anybody at all, you're not ready. Don't be like so many writers. Don't be like so many thousands of people who call themselves writers. Don't be dull and boring and pretentious. Don't be consumed with self-love. The libraries of the world have yawned themselves to sleep over your kind. Don't add to that. Don't do it. Unless it comes out of your soul like a rocket, unless being still would drive you to madness or suicide or murder, don't do it. Unless the sun inside you is burning your gut, don't do it. When it is truly time, and if you have been chosen, it will do it by itself, and it will keep on doing it until you die or it dies in you. There is no other way, and there never was. Okay. I did my best to read it, but of course there's a message in there. Of course Bukowski is, is saying something. But more importantly, do you get any of this? Sorry. These are so important. Rhythm, rhyme, and speed. Let's start with rhythm. Now, if your writing is all the same, if the rhythm is always the same, it can be very boring. Let's think about when you're on a bus or you're on a train. Sometimes when you're on a bus or on a train, it's very easy to fall asleep, even if you don't want to. You get up, you, you get on the train, you get on the bus and you sit there and all of a sudden you start falling asleep. One trick that many parents do is if their children won't sleep, put the kids in the car, drive around and then the kids will fall asleep. Why is that? A lot of the time it's because of the rhythm. The rhythm is steady. The rhythm is continuous. So it rocks you to sleep. It lulls you. And this kind of rhythm will make you tired because it's consistent and regular. So imagine that if you're writing, if your writing is regular, and I mean regular in rhythm, people might fall asleep. And so then we did this, and so then we did this, and then we did this, and then we did this, and then we did this. You can see already it's really boring and you'll fall asleep. If all your sentences are the same length and they all have this same feel to them, it's terrible. What you might have noticed with Bukowski's is, yeah, there were bits that were repeating, but it never settled into a pattern. It never settled into this very, very predictable thing. So you didn't know, is it going to be a long one, a short one? Does it, is it going to sound fast or slow? There was a lot of differences in there. This is really hard to do when you write 
but it's something so important the rhythm all songs have rhythm might be 120 beats per minute 80 beats per minute 60 beats per minute find out how many beats per minute you like when i say b beats per minute i mean bpm right so let's say it's 102 or 86 or 124 how many beats per minute do you like let's uh let, well let's do this live so see if we can do this while you're during the lecture so bpm keyboard there are loads of these online and if i tap something one two That's how much I'm tapping, right? And so the beats per minute is, you know, it's hovering around 53. That's the kind of thing you like. Well, you've got a rhythm. What kind of rhythms do you like? Do you like? That's pretty fast. That's 224. Some people like that. Some people like the steady. One, one, two, one. Think about the rhythms you like. So that one, it said it was 82 beats per minute. What happens if we go to YouTube? And this is me trying to get you to learn how to write rhythm. And you put 82 beats per minute. Sound like this. And you can write to that it might help you get a rhythm it can't stay on that because remember if it's too much on the same rhythm then people are going to fall asleep listening to that but it can be a starting point so that's one rhythm that's one rhythm and you need to change rhythms you need to find something with the speed here so one of the things i said was rhythm if it doesn't come bursting out of you in spite of everything don't do it there are rhythms in there and you might be able to get them by if it's hard for you looking at the umjal umjal syllables how many syllables does it have that can help people with the idea of rhythm now this if we just take this part and this part we're not going to analyze the whole poem but you can see if it doesn't come bursting out of you in spite of everything don't do it the classic response would be if it doesn't come jumping out of you even though you want to don't do it you would copy this the classic example would this this would be sort of a b c and it has one two three four five six seven eight nine ten one two three five The classic example would then to do another 10, 5, 3, 10, 5, 3, 10, 5, 3. But that would be boring. What does Bukowski do if we look at it? Unless it comes unasked out of your, so that's nine, heart and your mind and your mouth. I might get this wrong. Seven and your gut. Three, three. So not only is there an extra line, the syllables are different. So this was three and this was four. A, B, C, D. But it feels similar. It doesn't feel completely different. It doesn't feel like a different poem or a different style. They still feel the same thing. It's just slightly different rhythm. What is the same thing? Well, the same thing, obviously, is this. Don't do it. You can see here that this one gets even bigger. It's even more different. 
and you get don't do it and then you get don't do it don't do it don't do it forget about it he surprises you he surprises you with this forget about it here you think it's going to be don't do it don't do it don't yeah i've got it i've got it guess what don't do it guess what don't no forget about it ah you surprised me i wasn't expecting that predictable writing is boring he set up this pattern he set up a pattern of don't do it don't do it don't do it don't do it. no forget about it. and then he made you realize that he's still creating it's not predictable it's not a robot it's not a mathematical formula it's human and it's created let's take a look predictable writing is wrong let's take a look at this 10 5 3 9 7 3 3 what you should be able to notice a general pattern but the syllables are getting less there are fewer syllables what does this effect do it doesn't do that all the time but it's long middle small long long small small what is this effect doing that is one of the ways it's one of the ways it's not the only way of getting speed let's let's think of a roller coaster so you might have to excuse my roller coaster noises for a while but you know what a roller coaster is like you think of the tea express at everland or, or something like that that's a pretty terrible roller coaster but it will serve the purpose for today someone in the roller coaster there she is going the roller coaster at the beginning takes a long time and it's slow the goes down very quickly this go this part here and this part here you need them both because this builds the tension right this builds the tension and sometimes the best part about the roller coaster is not this part this is the best part just before you're about to go the it's the the knowledge that something is coming so the long bits and the short bits complement each other and the long bits make this bit feel faster because there's a dramatic change in speed so it's long and then it's short here you've got the same thing if, if it doesn't come bursting out of you in spite of everything don't do it that don't do it feels faster feels quicker you're gonna have to try practice reading these to get this feeling but the other one there is speed there's not as much rhyme in this so let's just stay on the rhythm and speed for a bit let's go down and find some other things the poem changes here I mean, if you look at this it there's one word all by itself sleep and love just by themselves why 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 not because there are no rules maybe because that's the way it's formatted it doesn't matter but it looks interesting it looks unpredictable it looks a little bit messy and because so it looks a bit unstructured and messy right it, it's if you've got OCD or ADHD or something like that you might if you're very gom -gom -an, very meticulous you might look at that and go oh, it, it doesn't it's it's not justified it's not set right and that would be an understandable response but why might it be effective if it looks a bit unstructured and messy what subconsciously unconsciously 
what does that give us? Well, our thoughts are what? Unstructured and messy. Our thoughts don't come in a nice logical procession. Our thoughts just randomly pop up. And sometimes we have thoughts we didn't think about. You ever get it? Sometimes a thought comes into your head and oh, you didn't want to think that thought. It just pops into your head. That's what this writing is like. It's trying to give that idea of honesty and directness. This is, it really sounds like that's his normal voice. It's not some very, he spent 10 years trying to find the perfect words and the perfect imagery. It sounds honest. It sounds direct. That's very difficult to do. But that's what Bukowski has here. You will also notice with this honest and direct, it's a bit unstructured and messy. Look at the vocab. Look at the vocabulary. There's nothing in there that might make you reach for a dictionary. Probably I could write that in Korean. My Korean's not very good, but there are not too many words in there that are really hard, are they? They're all pretty simple for the most part. And so poetry doesn't need to have very complicated, very hard words. Just if you're doing Bukowski style, it just needs to have this simple, honest, direct. And if it looks a bit unstructured, if it looks a bit messy, then that might add to the qualities. There are different parts in this, so it is quite long. You might struggle to write something this long. Let's see if we can write something similar to Bukowski, and I haven't planned or prepared this, but let's see if we can take a little bit of this style. So he's got this don't do it, don't do it, comes back, and then sometimes it will do it or it dies and you're not ready. So the the repeating idea is if you want to do this, don't do it. If you want to do this, don't do it. If you want to do this, think about it. That's his idea. Let's see here if we can do something similar. The people, I'm worried what I'm going to write now because I have no idea. I'm just going to write the people who want money. They're silly. The people who want power and war, they're silly. The people who want, nah, change want. People who need. Sex and. Uh, the people who need sex and. Um, I'm thinking of this nth room. The people who need sex and. We've done power. And the people who need sex and to. Enslave people. They're more than silly. Who are these people? And I'm worried about hitting this. And where did they come from? There we go. There's a poem written a little bit like Bukowski. I was running out of room. The people who want money, they're silly. The people who want power and war, 
They're silly. The people who need sex and to enslave people, they're more than silly. Who are these people? Where did they come from? That's just looking at Bukowski's idea and not thinking. I'm not thinking about what I'm writing. You know, I had a little pause, obviously, because I'm writing publicly and there's a reputation. I have to be careful of my words. You're allowed to write whatever you want. If you want to swear, or if you want, there's, there's no limits. I have to be a little bit more careful because of my position, I guess. But you can see it's just, OK, well, this is Bukowski's kind of thing. Let's get some inspiration from that. Let's understand. Yeah. We try to understand it and then we try to use it. But we're not copying. We're just being aware of Bukowski's style. The most important thing about this, my, this poem. What should we call it? Should we call it something? We'll call it. Don't be silly. It's not a very good title. But the thing about this is I didn't spend a lot of time on it. I just did it. Right? That's what you need to do. And do that. Great. And then post it. Do another one. Try a third one. We'll go back. Well, what if we just change this a bit? People who want power and war and death. You know, you can change things about. That's fine. But when you first start writing, it's just got to come out of you. So get used to this idea of you're not thinking, you're not trying to be clever, you're not trying to be amazing. You're just going to write something that is in your knyang ane. That's, that's what you have to do. So that's Bukowski. And you could do more of that. I like the end of Bukowski's work. So that's Don't Be Silly. I like the end of Bukowski. When it is truly time, and if you have been chosen, it will do it by itself, and it will keep on doing it until you die, or it dies in you. There is no other way, and there never was, and there never was. Because it has this timeless, it feels like his work is, is speaking to some hidden truth, or is there's this thing that exists beyond humans. This it. What is this it? You don't know. You can think about it, but it creates a mystery, and humans like mystery. The last thing I'll say, I should say, is this. Did you notice? There are no capital letters here. Now, that would be incorrect on Microsoft Word or something. If you type that, it would come up. This is not correct. A little red line, it'd look like this, wouldn't it? That doesn't matter because... No rules, just right. There are no capital letters here. So that seems like a decision. There's a decision to say no capital letters. And if there's no capital letters, there are full stops, though, Papa, period. In England, we call them a full stop. If there's no capital letters, if you did have capital letters, there would be a different feeling, wouldn't there? Because if you had capital letters, it wouldn't all go together. These all look the same. They feel equal. They feel like they're all the same thing. Whereas if you had... There's a full stop, so this would be big T, your kind, and then D, and then U. It wouldn't have that same nice, same nice connection, would there? So by doing something grammatically illegal, so it's grammatically incorrect, but by doing something grammatically incorrect, it increases the aesthetic. Right, so you've got this battle between grammar. You also have aesthetic. Aesthetic. I hope that. Right, the rules and how it looks. So I said there are no rules, but you don't have to write grammatically. You don't have to. You can, absolutely. But you also want to consider this more. What does it look like? How can I make this right? 
when I looked at some of your assignments, the newspaper ones, they didn't look right. So this is something that I want a lot of you to try to get better at, this aesthetic idea. This aesthetically has it. And it's sacrificing, what do you think? It's sacrificing grammar to increase the aesthetics. Totally right in poetry. Okay. Let's have a look at Maya Angelou. Still I Rise. Female poet, author. You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still, like dust, I'll rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Because I walk like I've got oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like moons and like suns, with the certainty of tides, just like hope springing high, still I'll rise. Did you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries? Does my haughtiness offend you? Don't you take it awful hard? Because I laugh like I've got gold mines digging in my own backyard. You may shoot me with your words, you may cut me with your eyes, you may kill me with your hatefulness, but still, like air, I'll rise. Does my sexiness upset you? Does it come as a surprise that I dance like I've got diamonds at the meeting of my thighs? Out of the huts of history's shame I rise, up from a past that's rooted in pain I rise. I'm a black ocean, leaping and wide, welling and swelling I bear in the tide. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise. Into a daybreak that's wonderfully clear, I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestor gave, I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise, I rise, I rise. Poem by Maya Angelou. What do you think? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Does it speak to you? If you read it, does it sound with a different rhythm? Because you could try to read it absolutely differently. You could try to read it more quickly. Sometimes I read slowly, but that's how I read. That's the speed of what I... My internal consciousness or clock reads at that speed with poetry. So I like to hear the words. So after what did you think? Now look at... What's the same and what's different with Bukowski's? Well, there are some similarities because this... I'll rise or I rise is the similar to this. Don't do it. And he changes it to forget about it. And the conclusion of Bukowski's was not don't do it, but it will do it. So Bukowski's kind of flips. Don't do it, don't do it, it will do it. Whereas Maya Angelou, she has this same, we'll, we'll come to this in a minute, she has this same thing, but in her one at the end, it's rise, rise, right. It starts coming more repeatedly more often it, it's one two three and then when you get down here you notice it's four five six seven eight nine there's speed there's that building up of tension there's that roller coaster t express i was telling you about there's one jung 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 yeah these if they're a beat if they're a drum snare if they're a b chord whatever they are they start coming more regularly and when they start coming more regularly the speed builds up so there's a difference between bukowski's and angelo's and it seems to fit in, fit in with the concept because this thing of I'll rise, you know, this, this idea of rising and, and coming up, obviously it means 
sociologically I'll, I'll come into society and I, I'll be historically subjective but also literally it's, it's about rising and this thing is until it rises and that's often how we see things rise to get off the ground to beat gravity so it seems to have it seems to work with this so they do different things but they both have this now what is this it's a catchphrase it's a motif it's a riff or it's an earworm something that's repeated don't have to use this you don't have to have any repeats in your poetry but it can be useful there are no rules but you can have this catchphrase this this title this idea it doesn't even have to have any meaning but just something that's repeated you get you have this idea of an earworm so you have daft punks get lucky you have wrecking ball you have any song you think about and it's got this repeated bit this chorus this hook and that's what these are so it, all the other words you might forget but you'll remember this you'll remember this you know you can't quite remember all the other words i kind of get it yeah okay but this and because you can remember this then you can remember the poem so your poem becomes memorable because there's something in there that the reader will remember because it's been hit into their head many 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 times that's what the catchphrase the motif the riff the earworm is that's one of the similarities between Bukowski's Angelus the structure here it's more structured and it's it's a classic style so just to look at rhyme you've got so I'm getting used to my pen still a B C A A then it's B C B uh, I made a mistake that's B well done David everyone's shouting at the history there's no other history history lies dirt rise so these two rhyme so they're the same thing these one and these ones don't so it's a then you got B and you got C because this is a new one this is a new rhyme we don't have dirt hurt Kurt opsa okay, so C rise like this is the same rhyme so it goes a B C B a B C B so my session it upset you with a glue they kind of rhyme but they're not really we could call them a half rhyme they are half rhyme my sassiness upset you why are you upset with gloom because I walk like I've got oil wells wells and you no so that's C pumping in my living room now these two rhyme these two don't so A B C B just like moons and like suns with the certainty of tides just like hope springing high still I rise B not very good at writing this down you can see that this B and this B are the same this B and this B are the same but they're different from these ones so it comes number two number four one two three four not six not eight ten and twelve so you think then are ah, the next it's not going to come in the next one this lies rise tides rise the next one is going to be like this that would be the pattern if you were doing an IQ test if you're doing math then you would say well this one comes here right 
But it doesn't. It comes here again. With eyes and cries. It comes again. But it shouldn't do. Where's the pattern in that? And there. And there. So you can see there is a pattern to it but it's not really regular it's a little bit broken up and there's the first place it breaks up that one because it repeats now if the poem was only that i'm gonna if the poem was only this kind of a b c b a b c it would be boring look here all of a sudden it changes Bukowski did the same thing. He he just changed. He went somewhere. But there's still the catchphrase. It's changed. It's changed from I'll rise to I rise. It, so, But there's something that comes across. And it's changed out of the structure. So this is about women's emancipation. It, it's about subjectivity. And here, it's getting a bit too deep, but is she breaking out of the structure? This is the structure that I'm meant to be in, and bang, I break out of the structure and I rise. And it works, it's effective. You can only break out of a structure. Let me make sure this is clear for you. You can only break a structure. And I mean structure like A, B, C, B, A, B, C, B. Dun, 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 don't do it dun, 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 don't do it that's a structure it's a form you can only break a structure if you make one first because if it's all just all over the place there's no structure so what good writers do sometimes is they'll make a little structure and then they'll break it and then it feels like they're creative because they're they're breaking the rules and they're doing what's unexpected. To them, it might be expected, but making a little structure and then breaking it. You can see here, you think it might continue, but the writer is always in control. The writer is always ahead of the reader, taking the reader on a journey that the reader cannot predict because... Because that would be boring if you could predict it. If you could see your life's path out in front of you until the end, then life would be pretty boring. You, you don't want to know what's up ahead. It's got to be a mystery. And that's what happens with these, this poetry. So I like this idea of creating a structure, then breaking the structure. Having a catchphrase, a motif, an earworm, something that repeats. Similar to Bukowski's, but the, the rhyme scheme was different. Let's see if we can write another one mm, more based on this. So with a structured thing, but then break the structure. That's what we'll try to do. And also with this A, B, C, B. So it was A, B, C, B. But it could also be A, B, A, B. Mm. Could be A, B, C, A, B, C could be anything doesn't matter what the structure is and there are many this was the classic one but this also works let's try to create a structure and then break it we're not going to write as long as this now uh, I just looked down here and I saw a little clock so I do something on time because that's right in front of me and it's nearly dinner time so why not that It's late on Friday. I just looked at the time. Time to see my friends and drink a little I don't know why but I always 
feel fine. Red or white. Doesn't matter. Just give me wine. And if you're sad, wine. And happy, wine. There's always time. for the drink because <laughs> you're expecting wine there's always time for but you've got to break the rules you, you you've got to mess with the reader's anticipation so as, as soon as the reader can predict then the reader is controlling and you're not controlling so it's about taking back control so here we have uh, let's give this a title any ideas for a title any suggestions uh, the suggestion will be, the title of this is Please. I don't, it's better than the last one. Please. It's late on Friday. I just looked at the time. Time to see my friends and drink a little wine. I don't know why, but I always feel fine. Red or white, doesn't matter. Just give me wine. And if you're sad, wine. And happy, wine. There's always time for a drink. I hope I don't get a reputation for being a heavy drinker here. That's not the, I was just thinking of something to rhyme with time. I've also noticed that these two words here are the same. Now, you really shouldn't do that. It's late on Friday. I just looked at the time. Time to see my friends and drink a little wine. So the rhyme here and here and here. So it strengthens it. Now, if I was structuring it, I wouldn't write like that. But I was just writing naturally without thinking. And without thinking, I've done something kind of illegal by repeating the same word twice, but it works. I'm going to finish here because we've looked at two poems. Let me change to the PowerPoint so that you know the so that you know this is finishing that noise will be a good noise so assignment don't stress too much with the assignments it's it's not so much an assignment right it's it's more like uh it's more like yonsup if you're learning English, it's good to study once or twice a week. Huh? If you're learning guitar, it's good to study once or twice a week. If you're trying to write, it's good to practice once or twice a week. So this is practice. It's not assignments. Don't think guadje. Think yonsup. Okay. So with this, just do some yonsup. Try to write. This is going to be really hard. So you'll be able to write. Just write honestly. That's hard, but do it. Then, even harder, post it on the discussion. Talk about or read other classmates' poems. You might just say, yep, great, read it. Maybe you didn't even read it. Maybe you're just lying. But try to get a little bit more interactive because that's what people do. They have like a writing moems, writing groups, writing clubs, and people come together and they read it and they say, give their honest opinion about the writing. You might be very embarrassed, but you'll learn so much. You'll learn much more than just writing by yourself. Just try to write some things and put them down. I don't expect you to write like Bukowski. <laughs> I don't expect to, you to write like Matt Angelo because they're famous. And you're just a uh, Solio de University student. 
but you're you. Maybe one day you'll be famous. Maybe one day you'll just write about yourself honestly. Try to be you. Try to write. Try to focus on rhythm, speed, rhyme, feeling, earworms, catchphrases, creating a structure and then breaking the structure. See what you can come up with. I look forward to seeing your efforts. If you have any questions or worries, just get in touch with me. I'm always available. I'll see you next week. Stay happy, stay positive, stay healthy. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Goodbye.